Hello and welcome to Out of My Mind. This is Rob Wells. Uh, today, I promised on Monday that today was going to be a bit of a rant. And it will be, but it's going to be a short rant. And uh, it's not going to be an angry rant. It's just going to be kind of an exasperated rant. Because I've had kind of a long day. Uh, my own mental illness is not doing good at the present time. And uh, I have been... Uh, I'm working from home today. I'll probably work from home tomorrow. Um, and I have been fighting the demons. Um, so, without any more adieu, adieu, not adieu, that means goodbye. Without adieu, let's get started. Uh, what I want to... Uh, what I want to talk about today is an article that uh, was passed around Facebook quite a bit, probably still is. It's probably been passed around for the last several months. Um, uh, basically, uh, if you have a friend on Facebook who is an anti-vaxxer, that is probably where you've seen it. That's where I saw it. Uh, they posted it, the type of people who don't like medicine. Um, uh, this is an article uh, that is an interview with a guy named Dr. Jerome Kagan, who is a very highly revered Harvard psychologist who is saying that ADHD is not a real thing. Um, that, in my household, uh, did does not fly. My uh, wife has ADHD. And all three of my kids have ADHD. They are all clinically diagnosed, uh, and they are all on medicine, uh, and they are all doing so much better on medicine, uh, including and especially my wife uh, is doing so much better on medicine. So when someone says that ADHD does not exist, that kind of gets my dander up. So let's talk about uh, this interview and, but as we talk about it, I want to talk about how to read articles that are about pop science um, and what you should look out for and red flags that should be raised. So, and I'm not saying this because I am any authority, because as we've already established, I am not a biology understander. I am uh, not a doctor. Uh, what I am is a reader, and uh, I have read this article uh, in Spiegel magazine with uh, Dr. Kagan, uh, has been debunked and debunked and debunked uh, by clinicians, by psychiatrists, by psychologists, by neuroscientists. Um, and so I have read all of this, and, uh, and I'm trying to boil it all down. Uh, so, for starters, uh, is what he is saying the medical consensus? No. Uh, he is not at all. Where does the medical consensus come from? It comes from the DSM, which is now the DSM-5. It stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, and the 5 means that it's the 5th edition. The 5th edition just came out about two years ago, um, and... It has all of the criteria uh, for every medical condition. When I was being diagnosed uh, as having OCD, my doctor went through line by line and said, uh, check, uh, this is true, check this, check this, check this. Um, the one that I know by heart is uh, schizophrenia. Um, it gives five criteria, and it says you have to have at least two of them. And the first one was delusions. I got a check mark on, yes, I have delusions. The second one was hallucinations, and check mark on hallucinations. The others were uh, um, disordered speech, which I don't have. I, I tend to say um a lot, especially on this uh, vlog. Um, I do at the end. But uh, disordered speech is, they call it kind of word salad. 
uh, where words are just all garbled and mixed up and in a random order. And then disordered behavior, which is where uh, you can't keep anything clean and you hoard and you, uh, you, you, you get the idea. I mean, you've seen enough uh, um, on the news probably about people with schizophrenia that you get the idea of what disordered behavior is. Uh, I can't remember what the fifth one is off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. Um, but those are the criteria for, for the DSM. The DSM says there are criteria. For ADHD, there are nine criteria. Uh, I can't name them, but there are nine criteria. And you have to meet, or you have to be able to check the box on nine criteria. Um, is the DSM always right? No, it has been wrong in the past. There is a lot of controversy about the new two-year-old one. Uh, a lot of controversy for things like uh, technically grief, the death of a loved one, uh, is now part of uh, clinical depression, which a lot of people say that that doesn't feel right. Um, there are things like that, but does the fact that there are problems with the DSM mean we should believe this 90-year-old man who has not worked as a clinician and uh, is a research psychologist? Um, I don't think so, no. Yes, we should always look at things with a grain of salt and we should always study and, and uh, figure out the truth, but just as a smell test uh, is what this, this guy is not part of the medical consensus, it kind of gets that dander up. Um, so, is he coming from a place of authority? Uh, at first you would say yes, and a lot of the articles that get passed around on Facebook really say this guy is the best. They actually post a ranking um, which ranks him as more influential than Carl Jung, um, which if you know anything about psychology, uh, the fact that he's more influential than Carl Jung makes you say, what? Really? Um, uh, because no. Uh, I looked up that ranking, and it is based on how many times your articles have been cited, how you are ranked in surveys from other psychologists, um, when Carl Jung, uh, I mean, his, <laughs> they're not on the same playing field. Uh, anyway, um, but is he an authority in this case? No, again, he's not. Uh, he is not a clinician. Uh, he never saw patients. Uh, he is not a psychiatrist. He is not a neuroscientist. He is a psychologist, which is still a big thing. Um, and does the weight of a Harvard research psychologist, uh, does it carry weight? Yes, it does. Uh, but uh, in this interview, he is talking entirely about the diagnosis process, which he has never done. Uh, he uses huge hyperbole, and he says, all kids this, and every kid that. And that is problematic. Um, so he makes some inflammatory statements. I'll cite two of them, and we'll look at two of them. He says, uh, now every kid, because he always uses every, uh, he says every kid has trouble in school and is inattentive and is uh, uh, hyperactive, but those kids uh, used to just be called lazy. But now they're taken to the pediatrician and they're given Ritalin uh, to make them perform better at school. Um, so first of all, that is anecdotal at best uh, because it's not every kid uh, that that happens to. Um, and uh, people with ADHD are not lazy. Holy moly. Uh, it's, uh, he doesn't cite any evidence for any of this. Uh, he doesn't cite, I did research 
uh, in the 1950s, and uh, these kids were lazy, and once they uh, got a good uh, whipping from the belt, uh, they did better in school. Um, it doesn't, I mean, he doesn't even try to back that up with any research. Uh, the second thing is he talks about high school kids. He says, uh, in high school, all kids are depressed and all kids are anxious. And he said that doesn't mean that they have depression and it doesn't mean they have an anxiety disorder. It's an issue of uh, hyperbole where he's saying every kid uh, has these disorders. Uh, it is an issue of he doesn't know what he's talking about because he was never one who was diagnosing. And then when you look at the DSM, when these kids go to be diagnosed, they're compared to the DSM. For depression, I believe there are five requirements. Uh, for ADHD, there are nine requirements. Um, and so every kid that every kid uh, goes and has to meet all of these requirements before they get diagnosed with a medical condition. And he ignores that on both counts. And it is frustrating and, and maddening. Now, is there some truth to what he says? Probably. I would say absolutely. There are cases where children are over-medicated. Yes, that has happened. Uh, I know specifically of... Uh, of a bunch of college-age kids who were diagnosed uh, improperly uh, in my own life. Um, does that mean that ADHD is not a real illness? No. That is bullcrap. Anyway, if you want to argue about this, um, and I'm sure there's plenty to argue because I made a lot of uh, broad statements um, but hopefully you can uh, take what I say with a grain of salt, too. Um, but if you want to argue about it, argue below in the comments. Uh, what is YouTube comment section for if not for arguing? And, uh, and of course, on Facebook and on Twitter, you can contact me. Uh, if you like the show, subscribe, uh, and uh, I will see you on Monday.